Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the use of models in language education. This is a synthesis based on the International Handbook of Model Assisted Language Learning. My name is Leonardo Estrada Serna and I am going to be conducting this presentation. This is the final assignment for the subject Mobile Assisted Language Learning. MOL is the acronym for Mobile Assisted Language Learning and we can define it as the learning process carried out by mobile technologies that empower students in their autonomy to learn as they do this at any place, any time. It requires the design of learning methodologies that aid students acquire languages strategically to access didactic and interactive materials. It's an extension of CALL, computer-assisted language learning, with its own characteristics, affordances, and limitations, because nowadays there are more people with a mobile device than with a computer. It is inevitable for the future of learning since we live in a mobile society, emails, social networks, GPS, searching on the web, etc. The initiations of MOL dates from the use of PDAs, that stands for Personal Digital Assistance, and they were activities that helped students create dictionaries as reading and translation strategies. PDA-based audio activities like using iPods facilitated listening comprehension, voice recording, and worked as audio dictionaries. There are a few reports like the PDA applications that were implemented on Taiwanese primary school children with speech recognition programs within game-based environments. Video features later led to the distribution of video-based flashcards in Japan combined with podcasts for listening practice. After that, with the iPhones it was possible to access web pages and web apps targeting vocabulary and grammar. In the United States, universities started with the use of web-based audio blogs for oral tasks and provision of feedback from the instructors. In spite of this, we have to face the reality about MOL. Although there are published implications, there is generalized lack of follow-up procedures. Many of these studies have omitted relevant data such as number of participants, duration, level of proficiency, language skills worked, among others. Its use has been limited to vocabulary review, 90% of the reports designed out-of-class applications, and only 10% focus on in-class usage of MOL. Some smartphones, however, started to be utilized as multimedia resources for learning, and Java permitted the creation of vocabulary games, for instance. Nevertheless, smartphones still have a minimal impact on MOL implications. Many apps have been created to practice dozens of languages, but don't go beyond flashcards, multiple choice, and fill in the blanks exercises, vocabulary and grammar drills, and games. There are technological limitations and cost factors. Now, if we analyze small applications, we can determine that apps have been designed mainly for extracurricular usage. Cell phones nowadays have simply replicated PDAs and MP3 players' activities applied before. While the sophistication of mobile phones grows exponentially, the diversification of mobile apps for learning languages has a slow and low quality increase. Statistical analysis of mobile implementations has relative percentages due to the irregular details presented on the published studies. English is the target language in over 60% of mobile studies, and Japan and China are the countries with more mobile studies. Three quarters of mall studies involve adults, most of who are university students. Teaching vocabulary has been the central component of the applied studies with a 45% of the implementations, followed by listening with 14%. 85% of mall implementations account for teacher-centered practices, and only 15 were learner-centered. Only a third of MOL applications have been a part of a course curriculum. The number of learners involved has been limited. Only 8% of the studies involve more than 100 participants, and about a half of them involve no more than 25 students. 
the duration of the projects hasn't been so long, with a third part of them carried out in up to three hours. Regarding learning outcomes, there are a few due to the limited number of studies undertaken. Many of the studies have critical research design flaws. For example, over 100 of the studies do not specify the duration of the treatment. And studies are oriented to short-term experiments and they haven't shown pedagogical innovation. With all of this panorama, we could say that more should be integrated into the curriculum design of institutions within the communicative approach. It should be learner-centered, constructivist, active foster of language learning, and it should have authentic interaction and negotiation of meaning. MOL should have an innovative pedagogy with a coherent technological program of instruction. We are very revised that MOL is an extension of call, and in both approaches, the teacher is required to promote thinking among learners, as Jonathan states. Simonson, Smaldino, and Spasek affirm that technologies are a means for the completion of tasks in an innovative way. Call as a predecessor of MOL has oriented mobile resources that act as interactive and collaborative environments. Call initiated the transformation of language instruction with its reinforcement of the communicative approach, seeing it as the negotiation of meaning rather than just teaching vocabulary and grammar. With its learner-centric approach, Cole represented engagement and motivation integrating multimedia technologies, games, problem-based learning, synchronous and asynchronous communication, and collaborative participation. Cole also fostered creativity and high-order thinking skills, and learners are active agents and users of the target language while being engaged in truly communicative practice, as Palalas asserts. By means of research and experimentation, MOL has to learn from cold practices and advance to deeper frameworks. Crompton defines M learning as learning through different contexts, social interactions, and content by means of electronic devices. M learning represents the notion of mobility across time and space. M learning is viewed as the creation of content through sharing formally and informally learning experiences as Pimmer and Patchler established. Now we're going to learn pros and cons about MOL, so let's start with pros first. MOL represents a face-to-face -face and virtual communication between teachers and students. You can have instant feedback on the activities from the instructors. There is support from more than one teacher. Activities can be adapted to learners' needs and preferences. There is negotiation of time extension of the activities. Also, there is reduction of the separation between learners and learning events. Besides that, we can have potential flexibility and access to learning resources. The communicative content is authentic. We can bring the real world into learning processes remotely. We can have simulated situations like a conversation with a passerby. We can learn anytime, anywhere. It's an individual and collaborative learning, constructivist learning environments, and the experience is based on activities and knowledge construction. Of course, there are some limitations and disadvantages of MOL, like for example, the student needs a really good sense of time management. Teachers cannot support learners 24-7. The flexibility in the M learning depends on the capacities and specification of the devices. The connectivity or data plan is needed to implement MOL. Learners and teachers may feel embarrassed when making mistakes. There could be emotions like fear, anxiety. As digital tools are ever-changing, students might feel overwhelmed by the amount of information. Students may feel higher responsibilities for managing their own learning with efficacy, and this is a more learner centered application. Authenticity in the communication might be a challenge for learners, and also learners' autonomy can be enhanced through the use of MOL. The role of the teachers cannot be underestimated. With all of this in mind, we can have a new vision of MOL in as much as we have a connected learner coupled with social media tools. 
with new forms of collaboration, involvement, and sharing. Communication is now more dynamic, co-creative, and synchronous. Communities can stay in touch with a participatory culture. Mall is motivating and enjoyable for learners in as much as it takes into account formal and non-formal interests, students' competences, learning styles, and strategies. New ways to express thoughts through images, videos, and audios to address individual and social needs have emerged. Devices are personal and private, so the personalization of learning becomes engaging for learners. There has to be a scrupulous selection and validation of learning materials that are student-centered. It's essential in MOL the guidance of experts on pedagogy. The creation of apps has to be related to pedagogical implications for the learners, understanding their needs. Social cultural approach seeks to blend technologies with co-construction of learning, task-based and authentic content and center the teaching on the learner. With MAL, the tradition of pedagogy is redefined with richer tools, context, and resources. MAL places the learners in authentic events with real people and culture, exploring and discovering the language. Interactive games, for instance, could be advisable to join the traditional methods of teaching with the current ones in order to foster the headway of communicative abilities. Gamification promotes actions like memorizing, collaborating, learning, obtaining information in authentic contexts, and solving problems. Vasquez Cano and Martin Monge confirm how 70% of language institutes in Spain assimilate gamification as an appealing mechanism to gain higher linguistic incomes and outcomes, and 25% of those polled rated interactive games with a maximum score. Games activate autonomy in an experiential learning and creativity in contextualized learning examples. Gonzalez and Ortega came up with a proposal for MOL implementations. They proposed five aspects when implementing MOL tasks and then obtained with this projection some results. Number one, if you focus on meaning, you're going to get high levels of authenticity and negotiation of meaning. Number two, with a communicative purpose or outcome, you can have a relevance on learning goals. Number three, if the task is learner-centered, there is greater flexibility and choice of the learners. Number four, holism consists of real-world language integrating form, function, and meaning that represents more dynamic or real communication contexts. Number five, reflection on meaning that activates high-order learning, and with this there is mediated feedback on authentic communicative situations. Now, what is the role of the teacher? Well, he's an essential coordinator of the interplay of the system. The voice of technology experts and pedagogical researchers for integral learning activities is also a valuable resource for teaching operations. Artifacts and learning strategies can signify an active dialogue with language encounters. There has to be flexibility and adaptability of the materials as an initiative for successful learning. Teachers are also risk takers, visionary leaders, and learning upholders. Successful practices of MAL also depends on the affordability and affordances of the implementations. For example, affordability means the access to mobile devices and connectivity depending on the regions and countries besides the average income. While 3G and 4G technologies are expanding worldwide, 2G networks are still in use in developing countries. The higher the level of connectivity, the higher the affordances of the digital gadgets. Affordances means the sophistication of hardware and software of the devices. The affordances on smartphones are way better than in feature phones, with more number of actions and activities to do. This reality demands a thoughtful design of the educational agenda, taking into consideration the affordability of learners and the affordances granted from their devices. 
Consequently, there are three agendas that have to be complied in Malt. The first one is about the social constructivism to transform teaching and learning using approaches such as task-based, project-based, challenge-based, and inquiry-based approaches. This intertwines collaborative and contextualized learning, enhancing the development of high-order thinking skills. The device, the learner, and the learning experience are all mobile, so there are activated channels for communication in real situations. The second agenda consists of the 21st century skills that students should develop, including creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Learners are supposed to progress in their critical thinking and problem solving. They should be able to work in teams, have autonomy, and show flexibility. The first and second agenda for more can be simultaneously reinforced with each other. The last agenda is about the extension of mobile technology's implications to both vulnerable populations and developed regions, where some people may be geographically segregated, may have disabilities or special needs, or indigenous communities. MO can serve as a means to bring education to people with lack of affordabilities to learn, seeking for equity. New technologies may solve many social problems. There is an educational theory that is called ecological constructivism, and it maintains how learning takes place through remote applications. According to the learning experiences, the affordances potentialize the perception of possible actions and learning present in the environment that students discern. Through more activities, students become aware of their surroundings to later play a role in their language and intercultural competence. It's called ecological in as much as it resembles how the nature and environment resonates the person's consciousness and activates responses towards it. Learning experiences vibrate in certain rhythms of understanding energizing their capabilities, capacities, responsibilities, and potentials towards the world around them. Whether introverted or extroverted, the learner takes from the learning environment what is best for him, according to his own process, building his own viewpoint and assumptions individually and collaboratively. This theoretical framework establishes that learning takes place during the interaction with others, assuming postures, interpretations, reactions, and actions upon the affordances in the environment. Ecological constructivism mentions the parts, the sum of the parts, and the interdependencies among the parts. The student becomes aware of the elements in the learning context and responds to them cognitively, emotionally, sensorially, socially, and spiritually during the interactions and collaboration with others. The origins of forms of thinking comes from the intrapersonal or individual construction of meaning along with interpersonal or social recognition of the artifacts, so the community plays an important role on perception. Similar to nature, knowledge is recreated and reformulated continually in an unconscious way within human interaction. The job of all teachers is to confirm students about their capacity to learn, perceive, and act on learning ecosystem and take them to their next step on learning. We can summarize then that mobile phones are assistances on language learning. Assistance is about the help provided by the language facilitator in order to overcome boundaries that may keep them away from reaching their potential. It's given by the teacher, parents, experts, or even their classmates. Mobiles act as personal assistants, and today we have examples such as Siri or the Google Assistant that read the user's voice and provides immediate support. Mobiles can be a relief for disabled people or a person with special needs, as there are software tools to aid with voice recognition, note-taking, screen reading, allowed readers for blind, etc. Some assistants have helped visually impaired citizens to reach more places around town, 
and some others like Blue Assist can be a aid for people who have difficulties in communication. There needs to be a balance. Too much assistance discredits students' capabilities, too little may limit their performances. There is concern about the substitution of teachers for intelligent virtual agents with the capacity to train about foreign languages. Nevertheless, they should be designed to complement the teaching practices and support students' progress on language. There are evidences on how language autonomy improves through the assistance of technologies, as Diaz Vera declares. They can build their awareness to empower their learning process in formal and non-formal scenarios. Teachers may also be in need of assistance in the use of handheld devices before having in mind autonomous learners with software skills. Teachers need to be trained on methodologies that potentialize small implications. There are some types of assistance granted by mobile devices, like cognitive and social support, organization and motivation, progress monitoring, direct and sustained help, mediation, communication, enrichment, and personal development. Now we're going into more apps and their features. Hardware and software on smartphones have been boosted tremendously in recent years. Better touchscreen quality, high resolution cameras, fingerprint detectors, faster internet connectivity, high definition images, sounds and videos, more precise GPS location, improved voice recognition, among others, are some of the characteristics that define today's apps. Smartphones are faster every time with huge storage capacities and more sophisticated apps with beautiful interfaces. Now, talking about types of apps, we have three. The first one, native apps. They come pre-installed in the smartphone or can be downloaded in the App Store or Play Store to access all of the features of the cell phone, such as the GPS, the camera, list of contacts, etc. Web apps are websites browsed through the Internet Navigator with the appearance of a real app, but the access to the mobile's features is limited. And finally, we have the hybrid apps because they utilize both native and web apps characteristics. Apps can be classified into two categories. First one, which is ADLL, that stands for Apps Dedicated to Language Learning. These are apps that were purposely designed for teaching languages. The second one, which is AALL, that stands for Apps Adapted to Language Learning. They were created not for language purposes, but can be adjusted for that. Bearing all of this in mind, with the growing number of apps, it is a challenge to choose the most appropriate ones to cope with the language goals in a lesson. No wonder why Palalas and Ali presented 15 criteria for assessing apps implemented for language development, rating with them with very satisfactory, satisfactory, neutral, unsatisfactory, or very unsatisfactory scores, and a final overall rating very poor, poor, adequate, good, and excellent. This may work as a quick reference for app users to check its potential applicability. The criteria includes purpose, accuracy, usefulness, flexibility, authenticity, engagement, feedback, integration, support, price, reliability, presentation, organization, navigation, and multimedia. There are a variety of numbers of ESL apps suggested by researchers and practitioners, among which can be named Learn English Grammar, Learn English Podcasts, Practice English Grammar, Busu, Real Deal English, and Sounds, the pronunciation app free. At the description box of this video, you can have access to a document that analyzes three apps using the 15 criteria by Palalas and Ali. Now we're going to focus on some strategies that foster more applications. For example, number one, which is make learning authentic. Authenticity means the immersion of learners into simulated real-life events where they face real problems and a functioning discourse. Kinmova agrees that applying authentic materials inside the classroom provides benefits to EFL students since they represent authentic environments, give examples on particular language functions in action and operation, present real language interaction, nonverbal components of the language, and social cultural aspects. 
more resources permit this exposure to actual contexts where the native language takes place. In internet, students can find authentic texts and videos as stimulus to produce useful language. Videos, for example, can result in a prompt to connect learners to real spoken speech and becomes an inspiration for them to produce language in similar situations. Shahani, Tariri, and Dipsar stated that authentic videos are able to support and improve the listening experience of students since they observe many features of real-life language that normally textbooks do not provide. Another strategy entails the connection of resources to theory. The decision-making of how to design and implement mall sessions is aligned to previously proven theories of learning. For instance, social constructivist theories deem collaboration among students in learning activities to acquire new knowledge socially. Behavior theories consider repetition of words as a tool to memorize terminology. For example, an augmented reality tool with active communication in real scenarios would activate the behaviorist approach once the learner reflects upon the experiences. Theories of SLA, Second Language Acquisition, inquire about the ways learners can assimilate the language naturally by means of achieving communicative purposes. For example, some activities that involve actions performed by native speakers like watching the news, a TV program, or a YouTube channel may reproduce how the target language is acquired innately. Something like this happened in a study conducted by Mira Ellency, where learners watched cable TV from English-speaking countries and their level of listening improved significantly. Moving forward from basic levels to more elaborate discourses depends on the exposure to native contents. The next strategy to analyze is learn by doing. According to the social constructivism, Exposure, conversations, and language instruments help students make sense of the real world. There has to be resources that capture students actively in a communicative situation that requires them to produce some language. Harmer corroborates on how important it is to have students put into practice what they learn. He proposes an activate stage in the classroom that refers to the point in which students make use of the linguistic input in simulated real situations, seeing the functionality of the new knowledge. Students are creators of the language they understand and use. Mo can help in the processing and production of the language through collaborative and communicative tasks. When they do some actions with the language, they get to be more autonomous under the teacher's supervision and feedback. For instance, students might prepare a job interview role play with a boss and a candidate. They create a script first, the teacher provides corrections and advices, and then rehearse the dialogues to present in a video. When using mall exercises, there has to be a balance on individual and social learning. During these mall sessions, there are moments in which students analyze individually the proposed content, and some other moments in which they discuss in groups about a topic. This has to do with the social constructivist proposals of going from a particular assimilation of the information to the sharing of common interests and co-constructed understandings. Although mobile devices foster individual learning due to their portability, they also signify the interaction with others in synchronous and asynchronous learning environments. How can we take advantage of the affordances of the cell phones? Affordances are the possible executions of the features of mobile devices, as we already saw, for learning intentions. For example, the camera of a cell phone can be utilized as a tool to record a dialogue among students, and at the same time it can be an instrument for the teacher to carry to the classroom real conversations from native interlocutors. Mobile devices can be an innovative, transformative, and cognitive means for the instructional design. Multimedia resources such as videos, audios, images, ebooks, or presentations can be strategies for learning to capture real language communication. On the other hand, teachers need to build incrementally. 
knowledge cannot be transmitted in a single episode of learning. Conversely, the procedure should segment the acquisition of language starting from smaller or lighter material to the gradual blend of the activities for successful outcomes. This promotes long-term storage of information and memory when given the proper time, guidance, and feedback. An example would be when teachers first present some vocabulary related to a PDF reading, to later predict some information about it, then do the reading, and finally come up with the answer to some questions about it. Moreover, instructors ought to create interactivity. Mo is a pioneer for interactivity with learning. Mo adapts to the students' learning styles, preferences, and needs, offering a bunch of multimedia options. Mo grants communicative exchanges with peers, teachers, and experts, offering an autonomous learning journey and social cultural awareness too. With apps like EduCreations, Putoons or Touchcast, learners can create and share digital content and interact with collaborative language tasks. We can lastly mention how feedback should be provided. Feedback is to support, guide, facilitate and mediate on the learning process and must be a motivator for the correction and completion of tasks. How and when feedback is conducted affects the results. There is formative feedback, which is used while the learning is being directed, and summative feedback, which is the final revision of an outcome. The teacher might want to highlight the mistakes without telling the answer, for example, or guide students towards the right responses, or ask them why they chose those answers. Peer feedback is another option when students grade each other's production or exchange their jobs to connect one another. As part of a quality management process, the material requires an iterative evaluation, where teachers have to always monitor how well the materials or strategies are working during their use, and make the necessary adjustments based on how satisfied students are and the feedback gathered periodically to determine resource enhancements. All in all, we can highlight some of the benefits of MOL. With MOL, language becomes more accessible, there is more flexibility in the use of time and space, there is continuity of learning and continuous reinforcements, there is immediacy in the search of queries at the moment, more interest and motives for practicing languages, MOL supports everyday language needs from learners, and it promotes curiosity for learning. It helps with physical or mental conditions of the users, and it banishes stress and anxiety. In order to finally end up with this presentation, we have some presumptions about the future of MOL. There is certainty that there is going to be more support for the practice of the four skills, more exposure to accents and dialects, more collaborative learning. There are going to be more options for learners to personalize the learning process. Besides, the practice of speaking is going to be with probably artificial native speakers, and the augmented reality for more vivid experiences is going to be part of our everyday lives. There will also be more affordances on games so that students feel motivated to learn. As a result, learning is going to be more enjoyable. And hopefully, MO will become an across-disciplinary approach within the pedagogy. We could also dare to say that there will be an increase in the understanding of how the brain works so that teaching practices will improve too. Okay guys, here are the references pointed out on this presentation and I really really want to thank you so much for your attention on this whole synthesis about more practices and don't forget to check out the link share in the description bar about the analysis of three mobile apps for studying English. Tell me in the comments what you think about implementing apps in ESL classrooms or some of your experiences using them. Thank you so much again, my name is Leonardo Estrada and I hope to see you next time.